Okay, welcome Kate and Ashley and Autumn and Mark and uh, Lana. Um, this is the webinar for the online statistics class. And in particular, this is the orientation webinar. So kind of the purpose of this is to get you acquainted with what the class is gonna look like, how to find things, um, proper ways of communicating, um, what to expect, how to get started. Uh, what I'm not gonna do today is teach statistics. Um, so this is not, there's not gonna be any statistical um, discussion at all today. But that'll change as soon as we're done with this. So pretty much everything we do after the orientation is statistics. The orientation itself is how to succeed in the class and how to find things in the class and what you're gonna, what's expected of you and that, all that kind of stuff. So I want to mention a few things. This is the very first webinar. Let me ask you, and you can put in the chat box, you can say whatever. Um, how many of you have taken an online class before? And just in the chat box, if you have, just uh, say yes. And if you haven't, say no. And I noticed that someone logged in under iPhone. That might be, um, oh. is that Vicki? Uh, something you just flashed. I just want to make sure I got everyone in attendance. So either stick in the chat box or whatever, um, who you are, because iPhone is not on my roster. <laughs> so if your name isn't up there, I got to ask you who you are. Um, so it looks like most of you have taken, uh, most of you have taken a online class. Um, and if you haven't, that's okay. That's not a requirement. The only, the only true requirement of this class is that you have to have internet access. Okay, if, you have, if you're gonna be in a place where you have no internet access for the next three months, then this isn't gonna work for you. Um, that's just a note, because it is an online class. Um, but you definitely don't have to. Let me ask you one more thing. The, a lot, most of you have taken an online class. In your online class, did you have regular webinars like we do in this class? This is a webinar, by the way, if you didn't know the word. It means you, you log in, you hear from me, Okay, most, most don't. Um, what I found is that most courses don't do webinars. And I've also found that when I get my evaluations at the end of the quarter, the number one positive comment that I get is the webinars. So what I found is that students really like the webinars. So I'm a strong advocate of webinars and I'm never gonna teach an online class without webinars. So you're getting it, whether you like it or not. And most people in the end, you're gonna like it. Even in the beginning usually like it. So the point of these webinars the point of these webinars is to be able to interact um, live, to live, um, hopefully live, so that you can ask questions, I can answer them right away, you can answer each other's questions, um, you can participate, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the rest of the class, you're gonna be watching videos, you're gonna be doing discussion forums, you're gonna be writing stuff, you're gonna be solving math problems online, um, all that, you're kind of on your own. I mean, people will help you or I'll help you, but it could take an hour or two or six hours to get back to you. Whereas the webinars, you ask question, I'm gonna answer it, okay? Within a second or two or whatever. My eyes are always on the screen, making sure I'm looking with one eye on the chat and one eye on the regular screen and the stuff I'm doing. So again, these are the webinars and we are going to have, the webinars last about an hour. I try, um, sometimes they last about an hour and 15 minutes might be a better estimate. Orientation is usually an hour. Um, and uh, so that's, I don't make them go on and on and on. They're not super short, but they're a reasonable amount of time. I recommend that when you're on the webinar that you don't do too much multitasking. Um, I can't prevent it, but you'll learn more if you're actually paying attention. So that's just a note. Uh, I know some of you are going to have to do a little multitasking. One of the great things about this class, I don't know if I have anyone in, in this room right now, um, but if you have like say an infant and it's really hard to go to class, but you can actually hang out with your infant, be a good dad or mom and make it work and still be able to take a statistics class where you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Okay, and there's lots of other reasons to take an online class. Often it is uh, logistical. You just can't get to the class because of transportation issues or timing issues or something. Um, it's not a problem. Um, one thing that I wanna tell you right away is that 
being in an online class does not mean that it takes less time to succeed in it. So it takes just as much time to succeed in an online class as it does to succeed in a face-to-face -face class. And in fact, I know specifically because I teach both. Um, I'm teaching this, this quarter. I know some of you are used to semesters were on quarters. So this quarter, um, I'm teaching one online class, this one, and one face-to-face -face statistics class. And it's important that you keep in mind that it's the same amount of work. It's not more, it's not less, but don't think it's less, okay? So there's less lecture, which means there's more out of lecture work kind of stuff. So that's just a note um, about the online class. And again, you said you've taken online classes, so hopefully you know that, but sometimes math might be a little harder than some other classes. So I don't try and like be evil or anything, but math is tough for some people. I wanna remind you, anytime you have a question, please stop you know, and just put it in the chat box or talk and I'll, I'll be happy to answer because that's a big point of this. So um, every week we will have one of these webinars, except this week we're having two. This week we're having an orientation because that's totally different. I don't teach statistics today. And then the next webinar will be on Tuesday at six o'clock p.m. It is mandatory that you watch the webinars. It's not mandatory that you watch them live. The orientation is mandatory you watch them live or there's a penalty of having to write a five page paper. Um, and that's not as much fun. So just to let you know, um, but what students have found is that if you watch them live, then you can interact, you get a lot more out of it than if you watch it as an archived YouTube video. Okay, you have to finish watching the webinars within, by the Sunday following the webinar. Okay, so we'll I'll be giving these webinar Tuesday. Uh, hopefully a lot of you will be able to show up, log in, and then be part of the webinar. And then those who can't, because you might be working or have another class or something, um, then just in some time between Tuesday night and Sunday night, you have watched the webinar, and then there'll be a little secret word quiz. I'll show you that in a little bit to show that you watched it. For the orientation, since this is a live orientation and it's required to be live because I, I just wanna make sure that you start in a good note is that um, there is no secret word quiz. I take physical attendance as I'm doing. And hopefully iPhone person, um, if you are not um, Vicky, then please let me know or I'm not logging you down as <laughs> attendance. So hopefully you're Vicky. Any questions so far? Any questions? Okay, one of the things I like about these webinar format, um, we're using the tool called Zoom and whether you've heard of it or not, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the, let's see, uh, it's got to change the name. Okay, it is Vicky. Okay, just want to make sure that I don't have someone showing up and then I have to make them write, write a five page paper because all I saw was iPhone. So we're good. Okay, so one of the great things about Zoom is it allows me to share my desktop and do all kinds of neat interactive stuff. That's why I use Zoom instead of Skype, for example. Um, it also allows some, for some privacy, like the chat box stuff. Um, so this is a Zoom tool. And I'm gonna share my desktop. So all of a sudden you're gonna see something different. You're gonna see my screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the course. Okay, and a second. I'll make sure I'm looking at the chat at the same time. There we go. Okay. So this is the class right now, what I have it set at is this is the, what's called homepage, which means that when you go to the course, this is what you're gonna see right now. And that is the syllabus. Um, that's gonna change because, and I'll show you that in a little bit what it's gonna change to. But the, I figure the first few days, the most important thing to look at is a syllabus. And after that, you're gonna look at statistics content. So what I wanna do is I wanna go through the syllabus and please, again, ask questions if there's anything I talk about that you don't understand um, or that you have questions about, um, please ask questions. So the first thing is that this is, um, and by the way, if for some reason I think you're looking at the syllabus and you're not, um, please let me know. I have an email. I want to make sure it's not one of the students wondering what's going on. Nope. Uh, there we go. Okay. 
Um, so this is uh, Statistics Online, Elementary Statistics. And just to let you know, and I'm sure my guess is it's 100% of you are going to say yes to this, but um, the purpose of this class for just about everyone is to be the big transfer class to get into the university with your math transfer degree and to be ready for whatever you're going to be doing in your degree. Um, and um, so if that's not true, let me know, but I think that's everyone. If, if it didn't transfer, I think everyone here would drop the class. Sound right? Okay, so my number one, absolutely number one priority in developing this class is to make sure it transfers. Because again, it's a disaster if it doesn't. And the good news is I've been teaching, I've been teaching this class longer. Again, I have no idea how old any of you are, but based on statistics that I've taken in the past, longer than any of you have been born <laughs> and alive. So I've been teaching this for a quarter century, um, uh, just about a quarter century actually. And I've been teaching online for about 15 years. So the good news is I've been doing this for a long time. And do I have a syllabus in PDF? Um, I don't, I don't necessarily have it in, it's just this. If you want, you can take a screenshot and do save as PDF. Do a print and save as PDF. Does that make sense, Mark? If you want PDF. Because PDF is just a format. Um, I try to do everything in Canvas if possible because that is what everyone accesses. PDF in particular has some big issues, which is why I don't do it in PDF. And the big issue is it's not accessible to blind students. And by law, I have to make sure it's accessible to anyone with any disability. So Mark, that's why I particularly don't do it in PDF, is that um, by law, I'm not allowed to, okay, and without a whole lot of hurdles to make it work. But if it's on this format, then it's legal and everything works. Uh, but you should be able to just hit print and do save as PDF. And hopefully that'll work and then do whatever, I don't know why you'd want PDF, but in case it has to be PDF, that's it. Okay. Um, so anyway, this is, this is the Math 201 Statistics and Probability, and it's a five-unit class. What that means, and this is important, and some, some of you need to make sure you have a reality check, is that when you have a five-unit class, what it's supposed to be is five minutes of lecture and then 10 hours of outside lecture work. Now, with an online class, it just means 15 hours total per week of work. It's a lot of work. Now, that doesn't mean everyone's going to spend exactly 15 hours. Some people are going to spend 10. Some people are going to spend 20, um, depending on how fast you work, how fast you learn, all kinds of things. But if you're expecting to do this on Sunday evening and that's it, that's the only time you have for this class, you need to drop this class. And you need to um, think again, decide when you do have time. Uh, one thing at our college, we offer this online every single quarter. And we're a quarter system, so it's every like 12 or 13 weeks, right? It's a 12 week quarter and there's a week of vacation in between winter and spring. But that's really important. If you don't have the time, then there's no reason to go through that horrible stress of not passing because you weren't able to spend more than a couple hours a week. It won't work, okay? So very important that you spend the time and it does take time, okay? I'm, I don't shoot the messenger, but it's just the way it's supposed to be. Um, in terms of contacting me, there's a few ways. One is my office phone number. Um, if you do that, usually I won't be in my office. You'll have to leave a message, and that does work. Um, and, and then I'll get back to you when I get back to you. I don't go to office on the weekend. And I do go to off my office five days a week, so Monday through Friday, and I'll get back to you then. Um, so that's one way of getting to me. It's not the best way. Okay. Another way of getting to me, of, of communicating with me, is email. Okay, um, I am um, unhealthy when it comes to how often I check my email. So most people like that, at least most of my students like that. I check my email probably at least 50 times a day. Okay, so if I don't get back to you within a day on email, either it means that um, we have no electricity in Tahoe, Okay, and I know some of you are not from Tahoe, so you may not know the reality of Tahoe in January and February. Anyone from Tahoe? Anyone from Tahoe? Anyone here from Tahoe? We have no one from Tahoe. 
So I want to let you know, um, probably all of you at least have heard of Tahoe and know what we're famous for. What are we famous for? Not, not from Tahoe, but most people know that what we're famous for. Snowboarding, okay? Yeah, snowboarding. Okay, so unlike, except not today, in fact, not this week, which is a bummer because right after this, I was going to go skiing and now I'm going to go hiking. Um, <laughs> we get, typically in January and February, we get an intense amount of snow. And because of that, when you get an intense amount of snow, we often lose electricity. And if that happens, bear with it, okay? There's nothing I can do about it. If we have no power, I can't turn on my computer and get on the internet if the internet's down. So I apologize for that. It, do, it doesn't happen a lot, but it happens sometimes. And fortunately not today, which is good because we don't want to happen orientation. But again, bear with it, usually about one or two days per winter. So that's the reason why I won't get back to you typically is that we have no power and I can't. Otherwise I will get back to you, it's a promise. I will get back to you within 24 hours. Typically, in terms of my scheduling, if it is before 9 p.m., I'll get back to you within a few hours, often within five minutes, okay? I sleep early, so don't expect me to ever communicate with you between 10 p.m. and 4.30 a.m., okay? Because I'm sleeping, okay? We all do that stuff, but don't be surprised if you get an email from me a response at 4.45 a.m. because I do wake up really early. Um, so that's my schedule in terms of my life. And that works for most people, but, I, but I'm, I'm a little unhealthy that I get back really fast because I just don't wanna have to deal with like 35 emails that I haven't thought about for three days. It's not my style. You'll, get, you'll hear from me right away. And that's, that's good because you'll get the communication. So that's the good news, okay? The bad news is that we do sometimes get the snow and then you'll understand. You can always check the forecast to see what happened. Okay. Sometimes we also get snowboarding idiots who run into the internet cable and take out the internet because they're driving and they're drunk, okay, or texting. And I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> believe it or not, it happened a few days ago. And that was Thursday. We had internet out for five hours. So that stuff happens too, and I can't do anything about that. But other than internet outage, you'll hear from me. That's a promise right away, okay? As long as it's not middle of the night to me. All right, the other, the, in terms of communication, there are really two main ways of communicating. And, the, and really, there, it depends on what the situation is. If it's a communication where it is something that other people aren't interested in, or if it's personal and you don't want other people to know about, then email, phone call. And by the way, you can email me by clicking this inbox button and then that's an email way of doing it too. Or you can email me direct, it all goes to my email address. Um, so either way, um, it'll get to me, just to let you know. Um, but if it is something that other people will be helped by and it's not personal, so for example, if you are having trouble on one of the homework problems, and you want some help and advice on how to get that problem solved. That's something other people will be interested in, helped by reading the communication, okay? Or if you have a question about the project, which I'll be talking about, about, I don't know, you know, what order you should put in the topics, whatever it might be, that's another one that you're gonna be helping other people if they can hear the conversation and there's nothing personal about it. So hopefully that makes sense. If you do have a question that is not a personal question, something that is not a private thing that will help other people, then what I want you to do is, if I scroll up, you will see discussions. And there are, what I have done is I have broken the discussions into two types. One is general questions. And that's what I call Q&A for question and answer forum. And if you post, I will get back to you pretty quickly, typically, unless it's after nine o'clock PM or maybe 9.30 PM sometimes. Um, and I will get back to you and answer it on that post. So if we click on that, there's nothing on it now. 
But if all you have to do is hit reply, type in your question, and then don't forget, hit post reply when you're done. Okay, and that's how you do it. Um, since a lot of you have taken an online class, uh, my guess is you've had something like this before. Um, this is very standard in terms of online classes. What's well, not standard is a webinar, but having these forums are standard. The other big Q&A piece is the Project One discussion forum. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And that is, if you have questions about the project, then you go to this forum and hit reply and ask us a specific question about the project. What I've learned is that I'd say about maybe two thirds of the questions are about projects and the other one third is about everything else combined. And we'll see why in a bit. Um, so that's why I have one specific for project one. And then by the way, there's gonna be a second project. I'll take down the project one and we'll have a project two discussion forum. And you'll be able to ask questions about project two. It's way early to even think about project two. Any questions about communication? Okay, and and just a note, just a note, um, feel free to answer each other's questions too. If someone asks a question and you know the answer, and you know, I haven't answered yet, and then give it, give, give it an answer. And the worst that could happen is that you weren't quite precise and I'll fix it and, you know, and answer it. So it'll just be, you'll be doing a good thing. And one of my philosophies in life is if you can do a good thing, you should do a good thing. It's always a good idea. Any questions so far? Okay, let me go back, talk about some more stuff. Just a note, um, this Canvas webpage, which is um, https com slash like tahocc.instructure.com slash, my strong suggestion is to bookmark that link. The reason is the other way to get to this site is to go through Passport, go click on Canvas, and that works. Unless, remember what I told you Todd was famous for? <laughs> Unless we have a whole lot of snow because the server sits at our campus and then everything's down and you won't be able to get online. Okay, even if you're living in San Diego where it never snows, okay, and I used to live there, by the way, it really doesn't. Uh, <laughs> if you're living in San Diego, um, you will be able to get onto this site even if our Tahoe site is closed, okay, is down. So that's just a note. So I would bookmark the Lake Tahoe CC and com, And then that actually is hosted by Amazon. And I think you're familiar with Amazon. It doesn't go down. So that's the good news. Um, there's one issue that could happen and that is it has to go through a login page. It goes through Sacramento at our chancellor's office, but that I think it went down once last year, but not for that long, but it, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, then the number three says live lectures and office hours, login information. So just note, um, you already know that because you're here. So the good news, another good thing about this Zoom is that there is a single link and this link works for every single um, webinar, multimedia communication activity that happens in the entire class. So you have the link, keep that link, and then you never have to worry about it again. Okay, don't lose the link though. Okay, because some ugly link. So that's just a note. Um, webinar is going to happen every week, but also in office hours, some people want to talk to me in Zoom so we can actually chat. And I can see your desktop, by the way, and you can show me what you're working on. And, um, and we can use that. Okay, so that's the good news is that this, this is my personal Zoom link that the state um, pays for, which is nice so that we guys can have a good environment. Any questions so far? Okay, you know, I need to, I mean, I'll do that when we talk, so I don't forget, because it's always good to show you how I edit things. Then there is the archived lectures. And I'm going to kill the link. There's a reason. There we go. So these are the archived lectures, and right now there's no link. Why is there no link for the archived lectures? Any guess? Uh, 
Yeah, quarter to start it. We haven't had one yet. Okay. Tonight there'll be a link, <laughs> but there isn't one now because this is our first lecture. What I will do, um, I might wait until after I'm I'm done doing this big six hour hike that I'm gonna do, is I'm going to um I post it on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, and but I can't create a special um folder on YouTube for videos unless there's a video to put in it. And then I can do that. So I have to wait until I have one. And then once I have one, I'll be able to post a link to it. So there will be a link and that will always work. And that's the ones to watch. Um, if you can't make the, the, if you can't make the live webinar, then you're always able to watch it on YouTube by Sunday of that week. Okay. And just note um, these webinars that we have, they will be uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay, I say I should say Monday or Tuesdays. So I try to make it mostly every other week. I think there's six Mondays and six Tuesdays for the regular le le webinars, but it, it doesn't quite it go quite every other because there's some Monday holidays and I like to honor the holidays. So I make sure that um, we don't have a Monday um, webinar when we're trying to celebrate Martin Luther King, Martin, Lurton, Mar Martin Luther King's birthday. Okay, so they're typically Monday and Tuesday. The only one that's not Monday or Tuesday, um, yeah, they're always at six. They're always at six. The only reason why they're not Monday and Tuesday is the midterm week. I have it on Wednesday because for the midterm week, the idea is you're supposed to be focusing on your, mid your midterm before you take the midterm. And then when you're done with the midterm, then you can watch the med webinar about the upcoming stuff. So that one's going to be on Wednesday, but all the rest are Monday and Tuesday. If there are special requests, I can make adjustments or changes. Um, but I've been teaching for a long time, and it seems like this six o'clock Monday, Tuesday works the best for almost everyone. Okay, not everyone, but for most people. So that's just from experience. I used to take requests, but I think I'm, this is the first time I'm trying set times, and we'll see if it works better or worse. I, I never know until I try it. Um, there are also full length YouTube lectures. So just to let you know, we're now in YouTube. Um, there are 13 of these. There we go. Any guess on why there's 13? It's not because it's some unlucky number and I'm trying to be mean to you. No, we don't have 13 weeks actually. It's a really good guess, Mark and Kate. Uh, but we're in a 12 week quarter. <laughs> there's 13 chapters there's 13 chapters in the textbook yeah so there's 13 chapters in the textbook so what i do is i have one what i call full length lecture for each chapter and each lecture is between a half an hour and an hour and 10 minutes depending on how much material there is to talk about okay there are also short introductory videos for each week and that's just like a two minute video welcome you to the week stuff, giving you a little idea of what's going on. Okay, they're very light. <coughs> then there are videos of worked out example problems. The videos of worked out example problems, most of those, and I'll show you that what that looks like in a bit, will happen when you're doing your homework and there'll be a link to the one that's most pertinent to that homework problem. Okay, I have also found that um, a lot of students like to watch videos for learning. So I have created many, many, many videos. Okay. I have also created interactive applets. So to let you know um, something about myself is I obviously do math. I think you know that and statistics. But another thing I've been doing for um, most of my life is I've been programming computers. And particularly, I write interactive applets for math and statistics. And I'll show you these particular ones in a little while when, um, uh, not a little while, so in a long while. Uh, and really, that's for reviewing for the midterm and for the final. Okay, and we'll see where that comes in. Uh, not today, because it's way too early to even talk about like what you need to study, that kind of stuff. Okay, so textbook. Okay, this is something that you may not be used to, and that is I am a very, very strong believer in making sure that 
success in the course is never justified because you can't afford the, the materials, the textbook and homework um, that is required for the course. Okay. So how does a textbook compare to the lectures? Which would be better to use reference for homework? Really good question, uh, Mark. Um, the answer is both are relevant. Okay. Both are relevant. And the other answer is it depends on your learning style. If you learn well by reading, then go for it. If you learn more by watching a video, go for that. The webinars you have to watch, but the full-length videos, that's optional. Um, if you want to learn from both, that's great too. You can do both. You can read the book. You can watch the videos. I have, I, 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 my philosophy is I put out more information than you need so that whatever your learning style is, you have what you need to learn. Does that make sense, Mark? Um, but I can't tell you what you learn best with because I don't know you. Um, you know yourself. But I do want to show you the textbook. Um, so the textbook is free. Okay. So the textbook is free. And I, this is a link to it. It's free online. And we've been using what's called the OpenStax textbook. And um, someone actually I've worked with for a while, not, a, not at Lake Tahoe Community College. I used to be the president for the state for community college math instructors. And she was um, my co-president for a while. Um, uh, sorry, there's a question from Kate. Can you use the applets on an Android or a PC? Um, so, the, so the nice thing, Kate, is that I program them in what's called JavaScript. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. But the good news is, is JavaScript can be used on any device, whether you're using an Android, whether you're using a um, iPhone, or whether you're using a Mac computer, or whether you're using a Windows-based computer. Um, it should work. Okay, that's the good news. Should work, you know, I can never tell for sure because I can only test, you know, as many devices as I can find, but so far they, they seem to work. Um, so anyway, this is the book and um, it's, it was actually originally on OpenStax, which is a big national thing for free textbooks. And then there was a grant that um, Delmar Larson from UC Davis got for the national grant of $5 million. And he had me in charge of statistics. And one of the things I've done is I've, took, I've taken that book and I put it into this new framework and then I've done more to it. So for example, chapter one's not that interesting. Um, let me go to, let's say, I don't know, chapter four. And then if we go to, for example, We, um, the mean or expected value. Then here's the book, but what I have done, remember I told you there were videos? Is I've added in the videos. So when you're reading the book, right when the topic comes up, there's a video, an embedded YouTube video. This is a video, unexpected. And again, I'm not going to have you watch the whole video right now, but that way, I forgot who it was, Mark, I think, uh, what's better, the video or, or reading. And what I've done now is I've put in the videos into the readings. So they're all contextually there. Um, I have also done some more. And so this is a calculator. And that way you can put in your values. I'm not going to go into this because um, this is what we'll be talking about throughout the quarter on how, how to understand this. But when we go through it, you'll be able to understand it and then you'll be able to put this in. You'll be able to put your data in, put all the stuff. Everything's free. And I wrote this in JavaScript. It should be, should be accessible in theory. Again, this is brand new. Literally, I don't know what you guys did for your winter break. This is what I did for my winter break. Every, every year I try to do one big significant progress towards making this class better. So this year's progress is this book and getting all the interactivity within the book so that while you're going through the book, 
this will work. If you don't like it, I apologize. This has never been done before as a book, you know, taking a book and putting, adding in interactivity and multimedia and all kinds of good stuff. So I even have a few games. If you have any ideas for more games, let me know, but you'll see them as we go. So that's all there. And again, it's free. Um, if you want a printed version, you can get that. It's not that much money, but there's no need um, unless that's the way you need to do it. Like, you know, if that's just your style and you have to have it on paper, you could do this on paper and you can get a printed version. Okay, and the easiest way of doing that, I think, is through OpenStax. And most people don't, very few people need a printed version. It's a lot of pages, just a worry. So if you wanna hit print, it's, you're gonna have to pay for the paper and it's many hundreds of pages. So just know, most people don't do it. Any questions? Okay, so anyway, this is, this is the book along with the videos, along with the interactive activities I put in. And I'm gonna put in more throughout the quarter. In fact, throughout the next three years, I'll be putting more in, it's my big project. Okay, let's go back. So that's the textbook. Um, I'll let you th read through the course description, student learning outcomes. One main thing I wanna mention though, it's not in the course description, but there's a reason why I like teaching statistics as much or better than any other math class that I teach. And I teach a lot of math classes. What I like about it is that it's relevant, okay? So for example, uh, I'll show you that in a bit. I can go in and find a current event, something that's going on in the news today, and I can say, and look at the article that used exactly what we're doing today for a statistic that we're doing in our stats class today, and they used it to be able to understand that what's going on today. Okay, it, it's, it's relevant to just about every single major. Um, it, it's really, really exciting because it's used everywhere. And by the end of the quarter, you'll see that. Okay, here's the grading policy. And I'm gonna go quickly through the grading policy and then I'm gonna go through each individual thing because there's a paragraph in each. So first thing I do in 90, 80, 70, 60, kind of your standard grading. Hopefully that's okay with everyone. I, Never gotten a complaint about that. There are different things. There are going to be assignments. Um, I used to call them homework, but I don't know what homework means for an online class because everything's homework. So I know I call them assignments, but it's going to feel like homework. Um, there are discussions. For those of you who have taken online class, you probably had to do discussions. Similar. Um, there is a midterm. And again, I'll talk about that in a bit. There are two projects, they're group projects, and there's a final exam. And these are the percents. I wanna mention something very important, a couple things. One is that 20% of the grade is your final, 30% is, I mean, is your midterm, 30% is your final. So 50% of your grade are these two exams, okay? The exams are important, okay? You need to study your butts off so that you can do well on the exams. That is really, really important. So that is important. Okay, now let me read through all the stuff that you got. Okay, let me talk about the exam policy. Okay, which a lot of times, that's one of the biggest in terms of questions. So here's the exam policy. First thing is on the exam, and I don't know if I put it in yet, because I think I'm changing my mind on some things, is that what you bring to your exam are, you bring a calculator. Okay, that is an absolute requirement for this class to succeed. And you're gonna get that in, um, as we go through this class, that this course really strongly depends on that. Okay, outside the exam, you can use a computer instead of a calculator, but I don't allow for internet access in, um, on the exams, because otherwise you can type in your friends and say, hey, how do I solve this problem? And I don't let that happen. Um, so that's why you have to have a calculator. You can borrow one from someone. It needs to be a statistics calculator, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but that calculator has to be there. Uh, pen and pencil, I think, I don't think I have to explain why. Um, paper if you want. Some people like to bring scratch paper so that if they write more than what's on the paper that I give you, then they got some extra space for more room. Um, and then you can bring a single three by five note card to the midterm. Okay, and you can write anything you want on either side. In this class, I don't believe in making you memorize anything because I find that a month after the class is over, 
it'll be gone if I do that. So instead, I want you to understand things and I want you to be able to critically think and critically use statistics. Um, and in the three by five note card, that's where you can put the formulas and anything else you want to put on it. Um, on the final exam, you don't get a three by five note card. You get an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So, because there's more information, I figure I'll let you have a little more room. Okay, I used to not do that. And then I said, yeah, I should let you have it. No one complained. Okay. Um, the exams are proctored exams. Now, I notice um, uh, I asked one time when some of you are here, but um, I want to let you know that most of the class is not from Tahoe. You never, ever have to come to Lake Tahoe to succeed in this class. Okay? That's a big note. That never is a requirement. You do have to have internet access, but there are two proctored exams. The proctored exams can be taken at any official proctor center or by any official proctor that I allow. So let me tell you where people find their proctors. So the number one place people find their proctors is at their local college. So for example, because I get a lot of students from Modesto Junior College, I'm not even completely sure why, but for some reason I got a following in Modesto and it's not, I never go to Modesto. I've driven through a couple times on the way to see family in LA, but I don't, I don't think I even stopped there for gas. Um, but for some reason, I get a lot of Modesto students and they go to their local college, they have a testing center and they take it there. Okay, not a problem. Or wherever your college is, most places in the world have a college nearby. Okay, the other, the number two place people take it is at their public library. So most public, not all, but most public libraries will proctor tests for you. Okay, some don't even know, like they haven't thought about it before. All you have to do is talk to the librarian and say, hey, you know, here's what I need. Can it happen? Um, you, you just have to say yes, print out the test and give it to me and then just be in eyesight while I'm taking the test. Um, again, they're, they're usually good with that. Um, and that's typically free, not always, but um, colleges sometimes pay. It's an interesting thing, the colleges, even your, your own college sometimes charges, um, whereas libraries usually don't charge, um, but it still could be charged. Um, if there's any fee, then you're responsible for it. I don't pay for that. Um, but again, there are lots of places where it's reasonable or free. Um, a third place that's a little more expensive is a um, tutoring center. So a tip, of, like one of the biggies is called the Sylvan Learning Center. They tutor mostly children. It's a children's tutoring center, but they're a business. They're happy to take your money and do the proctoring the test. They do charge because private tutoring centers are private. They're gonna charge money. Another one that I get, and I know I have one student that's gonna do this and I may have others that haven't kind of told me about it yet, is if you are in the military and you're serving our country, then your commanding officer is acceptable as your proctor. So you just have to um, make sure you talk to your commanding officer, make sure your commanding officer can do it for you, and then we'll let it happen. They have to be able to print the test out because I'm not gonna like fly out to Afghanistan or wherever we are and hand in the test. It's all gonna be by email. Um, but that's usually no problem. Uh, those are the main places people can get their proctors, okay? Sometimes if you can't find anyone there, I can help you out. So if you can't find a proctor, you send me an email saying, help, this is where I live, and then I'll find a proctor for you, okay? I have had, uh, last year actually, I had four different countries represented in terms of where students took tests. And they found proctors at every one of the countries. So just let you know, it, this is worldwide, okay? And you can find it. Okay, so proctor's not the hard part. The hard part is doing well in the test. That's always hard. Okay, um, the tests are taken by Wednesday, but they can be taken anytime before. So they can be taken on Saturday before or whatever. If you take it too early before, if you want to take it two weeks before, the problem is, is we won't have learned the material yet because the material covers up to that day. So again, you can still do it, but you probably won't do well. Any questions at all? about the 
um, to proctored exams. Any questions? Okay, there probably will be later. There always are, but that's it. Also, there's, and I'll let you know ahead of time, I have what I call the, uh, a, um, a midterm exam information quiz. And that's where you let me know who your proctor is. You give me the email, you give me their web page so that I can verify that they are the person they are. And you give me when you're gonna take it. And then I go and send it to them. Okay, if I don't know who, where you're gonna take the test, then I can't send it to the person. So that's something that you're gonna to have to do. And you have to do that at least a week ahead of time. Okay. All right, then there are assignments. Okay, assignments must be done by Sunday, but I strongly recommend you try and finish by Friday night. What I do, my own policy, is that if you request for an extension, the request must be made by Friday night. Because I want to award people, reward people for being, not being a procrastinator. Okay, it's a good lesson in life is that if you don't procrastinate, good things happen. So if you can know what's going on by Friday and done your best to try and do it, and then you realize you're not gonna have enough time on the weekend, send me an email, I'll give you an extension for the regular homework kind of assignments, so online assignments, and then it's not a problem. The discussion assignments you need to do ahead of time. I mean, yeah, you need to do that by Sunday because those are interactive and they close after Sunday and there's no interactivity anymore but the homework assignments, I can do extensions if they're asked by Friday, okay? The good news is that the main reason why extensions happened last quarter, kind of depressing, is that all those who lived in Northern California, they lost electricity because our power companies are so scared now. Every time they might think there might be a fire because of wind, they turn off electricity now. Um, I think that's over now that the winter started. So that's the good news, okay? Um, then there are discussions. So I'll show you those um, in a little bit what the assignments are, but you're gonna have discussions. Je I, wanna, I wanna say this, I want you to do something for me. I want you to type in into the chat box Thursday because they are due on Thursday for your initial post. You must, I want everyone right now to type in the word Thursday. And if you're watching this archived because you couldn't make either of them, I want you to write on a piece of paper Bef that has to be on the five pages of notes that you're doing, the word Thursday. Okay, the reason I'm doing this, not because I'm just like being weird. I get so many people on Sunday saying, well, I didn't know I was supposed to do it by Thursday. It's like, no, you have to do it by Thursday, okay? Okay, and it's not gonna tell you that on your uh, to-do list on Canvas. So I'm telling you now, Thursday, 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 Thursday. But I reward you, extra, remember I told you about the whole procrastination thing? If you do it by Wednesday, then I will promise, I will look at it. And if your initial post is not acceptable, I'll let you know so that you can fix it and get full credit. If you do it on Thursday, then you cross your fingers because I won't tell you if it's wrong, then I'll just take off points, okay? But if it's right, you still get full credit. Okay, so that's just a note. So Thursday's the absolute deadline for your initial post. That gives everyone Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to take a look at that post and respond. And I'll show you in a little bit what they look like. Any questions so far? Okay, live webinars we've talked a lot about. Um, the main thing I wanna mention, the penalty, I didn't wanna do all the mean stuff at the beginning, now it's time for the mean, mean stuff. So do we have one due this week? Um, so Kate, good news and bad news. I'll give you the bad news first, okay? The answer is no, because we have two due this week, <laughs> okay? The good news is one of them is kind of a freebie. If you don't get 10 points, then you were just sleeping, okay? The other one's hard, but the first one is gonna be a freebie, you'll see, okay? So the answer is definitely every week there's one due, except the midterm week. Midterm week is a whole different thing because then you're focusing on the midterm, okay? And also the finals is different. Finals is not a regular week, that's just taking your final. Um, but otherwise, yes. Okay. Um, so live webinars, I wanna mention this. This is really important. There will be a 5% penalty. 
course penalty, okay, for each webinar that's not viewed. Okay, so if you miss two webinars, you can't get an A in this class. If you miss six webinars, you can't pass this class. Okay, all you have to do is watch it. There'll be a secret word at the end. You write it down. It's a two-second quiz. It says, what's the secret word, and you're done. Okay, um, what we're doing now, this isn't that. This is uh, orientation. Okay, and I just checked. No new people. I guess we'll have a lot of people tomorrow night. Okay, any questions so far on that? Okay, if you don't have that secret word done by Sunday after the webinar, then I'm going to make you write down, then I'm going to make you watch it and do five pages of notes. And if you don't do five pages of notes to me, you lose 5% on your grade, which is really bad. So it, watch the webinars every week. Okay. If for some reason you know you're going to be gone ahead of time for the entire week, then you talk to me and we'll work something out, I promise. <coughs> okay, projects. Two projects are done, project one and project two. The main thing about the project is you must work within partnerships or trios. Trios are better. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to find partners. I don't, you don't have to know anything other than you need to find partners. You don't need to know anything about statistics to be able to find a partner. Other than what I'm about to show you, if you go to the discussions, and you go to the project one discussion forum. Hit reply and say, hey, my name is blah, 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 whatever your name is, I'm looking for a partner. And then someone else will reply, me too, let's be partners. Very easy to find a partner, okay? And then hopefully find three, find three people. The reason why I strongly, 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 strongly recommend three is that if someone drops a class, you still have another person, okay? You have a fallback. Okay, so does anyone want to work in trio? So Mark, your best bet is to post in the Project One discussion forum, because right now there's only, what, five of you in there, and the, but everyone will look at this form, and this is forever, and then you've got it, and then you get each other's information, all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'll give a whole webinar, and we'll talk about, net, we'll talk about the projects every week, but I wanted to talk, about, number one, we can do right away is you can go find partners. Okay, you can find it now, too, I guess, but, I mean, you can find it on the, chat thing, but I think that the discussion forum is better because it's permanent. So you can go look back and you can find, oh yeah, it was that person that did it. Whereas a chat is gone after we see it. Okay, let's go back. There's not too much more, we're almost done. Ah. The Q&A forum I already told you about. If you want to give me feedback and you don't want to tell me who you are because, I don't know, you're embarrassed, but you don't have to be embarrassed. I'm always happy. They'll never be, I never take off points because you gave me feedback. But if you want it to be anonymous, you can click that and give me anonymous feedback and you're welcome to do that. I have a link to netiquette guidelines. The main thing about that, be nice to each other. That's the main thing. Be polite, don't forget. Even if you never ever physically are near anyone, don't forget that everyone here is a person and treat, treat everyone else like a person and be nice and polite to everyone. Okay, respectful. That's the main thing. I've mentioned my office hours. Um, these are the specific times. Uh, Monday and Friday, 10.15 to 11.15, Tuesday, 3.30 to 4.30, and then Wednesday and Thursday, 12 to 1. I'm around a lot more than that, but these are my guaranteed office hours. I mentioned the calculators a bit already. Um, I will be demonstrating with a TI-84. Okay, so that's the, mo that's the best recommended one. But if you have an 83, that's fine. If you have an 89, it's a little harder to use, but it's fine. If you have an Nspire, that's fine. There's a few others, but it has to be a statistics calculator. If it's not, it won't work. Um, and again, that's the kind of thing you can pop in your Q&A form. I have this kind of calculator, which is on your list. Will this work? And I'll tell you. Okay. Um, for, I, I've also created, I'm a programmer, remember, I've created an entire statistics package with everything you'd ever want to do in this class on a calculator. 
but it's much easier to do it this way, which is a spreadsheet. You just type in your numbers and just look, you don't type in anything else basically. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that as we go. Not today. Today we're not doing stats, but I want to let you know that's there. Um, if you have a learning disability, any accommodation will be met, whether that might be, you know, eyesight issues or time issues, whatever it is, any disability will be, will be met. All you have to do is contact our Disability Resource Center, which is that phone number right there, and then they'll help you and work with you. We have tutoring. Just a note. Now I'm going to go to the top. Da, 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 da. There it is. Close to the top. This free online tutoring. If you click that, they are always there. It's amazing. 24 7. They never take a break. They worked all day on Christmas. So they can help you out in stats. And that will work. They're not they're not from our class or anything, but they are um, but they know statistics. Okay, the main word on honestly is don't cheat. I'm pretty good at detecting it and it's, it's not gonna help you in, in life if you learn how to get around by cheating. It'll get back to you someday, it'll be bad. Um, so don't cheat. Um, are there any questions about the syllabus before I quickly go and just kind of look at what the week's gonna be? what a normal week will look like. Okay, so let me go. This button that says modules, starting next week, that'll be the home page. I, I want you to start with the syllabus and the next week modules is everything. If I click on that. So the first thing is course information that has kind of redundancy. Most of the things I've already talked about in the syllabus are also linked there. But then we have each week has a stuff for the week. So this week you will have, so if I click there, this is that little one minute or two, a couple minute, little webinar, little uh, video that um, just introduces what's going on for the week. And I'm not gonna watch it because I'll let you do that. Then the next one is the webinar. And that also is gonna have the link to the web webinar. Um, you're there. And this, this week we have two webinars, only this week. Normally we only have one. Okay. And then student learning outcomes. Uh, what I've done is I've broken down the pieces that we've got by the different videos and stuff. So we got our videos. Um, the videos are voice over PowerPoint, so I also have the PowerPoints in case you want them. Then we have assignments. So let me show you what an assignment looks like. Here's the first one. Okay, this is a discussion assignment. Let me read through it. Please introduce yourself by stating two truthful facts about yourself and one thing that's not truthful. This is one of the very few assignments that is not about statistics, by the way. Um, you're going to see if other students can guess which are truthful and which are not truthful. Then respond to at least one other student's list to see if you can figure out which are truthful and which are not truthful. Finally, after someone has responded to your list, comment on whether the student was correct and then write about how you plan on using statistics in your future coursework or career. Please post a link by Thursday. Don't forget about that Thursday. Okay, or earlier. Okay. This is like full credit, anyone who does it, and there's nothing to do here. So then here's what you do. This very first reply button, this is how you post your first link. And then you type in it all, and I always do a model, so I'm gonna do the model live as we go. So here, are my two truths and one untruth. See if you can guess which are truthful. One, I received my PhD from Stanford University. In statistics. Over 20 years ago. Okay, that's number one. Number two. 
the online materials. Uh, to, that I have created, have saved students a total of over $1 million. And number three, I personally disconnected the communication system of the space shuttle causing it to stay in or orbit an extra day. Okay, now really important, don't forget to do this. You have to hit post reply when you're done. And there you go. All right, now any of you can reply. This is the one assignment, actually there's a couple, but not too many. One of the few assignments where I recommend you reply to lots of people because it's just fun. And then you're making people feel good. You could reply to mine too, see if you can guess. I will tell you two of these are true and one of these is not true. Okay, I won't tell you right now which is true, but maybe Sunday I'll let you know. Okay. Any questions? Any questions on what one of these assignments looks, what this first assignment looks like? You're going to have to do this too. And by the way, you're going to reply to, you can reply to mine, and then you also do the uh, above reply. So you reply below mine, that replies to my personal one. If I hit that, that replies to my personal one. I'm not going to reply to myself. And you shouldn't reply to yourself, by the way. And then for your first reply, you just hit the top reply. Any questions on that? Okay, that's that assignment. Let me show you what a real one looks like. I'm not gonna go into the details, but I just wanna kind of show you. Okay, I mean, that, that was a real one, but one that's more mathematical. Uh, where were we? Ah, missed it. I wanna go to modules. We're almost done. Okay, the next one is survey design. Okay, this is one, this is more of a typical week by week one. And this one you're gonna have to do also. This week you have two, but that first one's fun and easy. It shouldn't take you long, okay? Um, so here you're gonna have to, and you're not ready to do it yet until after you've read these first couple chapters. Um, you're gonna have to post a link to a news article or a course video or a journal article, okay? And that link must, in this case, talk about the sampling technique that was done in a study. It should not be about statistics, it should be about something else that uses statistics. And that's how these, most of the link, most of these are gonna be. What I will do is I will always post a model and I'll answer my own. Don't answer your own, please. So here's my model. Here are the latest polling results for the Democratic primaries. The sampling technique is found at the top of the spreadsheet near the bottom of the article. And here, if you click on the link, this is from, it's just an article from The Hill. And it's a national poll on the latest Democratic primaries. I'm not gonna go into it, but you get the idea. And then I write an analysis of it. This is a model analysis. I recommend reading mine. It gives you an idea of what's expected. Don't copy and paste mine into yours because then you're just gonna write mine It'll be a different article, <laughs> it doesn't work, okay? But it gives you an idea. Okay, again, I recommend doing the first one by Wednesday, and then I recommend the response not too long after that, okay? But it has to be done by Sunday, the response. And, it, and the initial has to be done by Thursday. Any questions? All right, so next. Uh, where was I? There we go. So you'll notice the next assignment is a secret word quiz. Okay, let me show you what it looks like to you guys, which is when I preview it. What was the secret word for the week one webinar? Well, none of you know yet because I haven't even given it yet. That's happening on Tuesday. And then you type in the word, 
when you're done typing in the word, don't forget to hit submit quiz and it'll tell you you got it right. And if you watch the webinar, you wrote down the secret word, there's no trick to it, then you'll get it right. Okay. That's easy. Uh, wrong one, that one. And then the last thing to talk about for the entire uh, orientation is after that, there are the chapter one and chapter two assignments. Okay. And I'll show you, I don't know, maybe chapter two just for fun. So I'm going to continue the assessment. And these are questions to do. I've already done a couple because I was practicing. So if I go next question, here's the question. You type in the answers. And again, I'm not going to do it for you. That's something you get to do. And just net the randomize these 13, 5, 14, 4, and 10 will be different. In fact, the problem you get will be slightly different. Um, you're able to, if you get it wrong, it'll ask you, do you want to try again? And it'll give you a different problem with the same similar concepts. And you can try as many times as you want until you get it right. Okay, so that's my suggestion is everyone should get over 90% on these assignments because you can keep trying and they're due Sunday night. Okay. And that's about it. I'll go back to the modules, make sure I've covered everything, but I think I have. Yeah, that's everything I really have to say about the webinar. Did anyone come in late that I missed? Let me go through the names. Let me unshare my desktop so we can just talk to each other. Uh, always have trouble finding it. Just a second. There it is. There. So, Kate, Ashley. Um, Okay, yeah, I got everyone on the list. Okay, I guess I'll have a lot on Tuesday. Any questions? So that's everything I have. Feel free to ask questions. This is the time. Any questions at all? And what I do, by the way, in all these webinars is I will sit there saying, are there any questions? If you don't have any questions and you feel like you're done, um, you can log out. There's a leave meeting button towards the bottom and say good night, or in this case, it's good day. Normally be good night. <laughs> Have a good day or whatever. I'm going to be doing this big hike. Um, but if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions. It's a really good time to ask questions. Okay, any questions? Again, again, the, the way I know that you have that you're done forever is that you've logged out, by the way. And I typically stay until pretty much everyone's logged out or it's clear that someone's left but not communicating or not paying attention. Okay, I'll have a great, it'll be great to work with y'all this quarter and I'm here to help. That's the most important thing. Okay. And Vicki, Kate, Autumn. Vicki or Autumn, any questions? Last chance. Autumn, any questions? All right, enjoy your day too. Hopefully you can have a great time outside or inside or whatever you wanna do. Okay, if you're watching this as the archived um, orientation, don't forget you need to email me your five pages of notes because this is the orientation webinar it has to be done that way. Um, if you watch this live, I got your attendance. I got your list on the attendance roster and you don't have to worry about it. Um, so have a great one. Uh, have a good, good Sunday. Bye.